Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I saved that first sip for you right there. Now, guys, check out my new cup. It says Cocoa Beach Pier. Got this down at the Quantum Financial Summit in Florida there. And boy, what a time that we have. Just amazing. And you know what? Met a lot of folks down there that are big supporters of the channel, folks that have gone through the coaching program and stuff like that. And I just want to say I love you. You are such amazing people. This community, absolutely, bar none, the best community in all of crypto. I really, really do believe that. Truly something else. And guys, I'll tell you something. We're going to need one another with what's coming down the pike. That is for sure. Listen to this. So here we have all this stuff. So, you know, I have, I've watched, I've read a few articles, but we were just so busy down there that I wasn't able to even get back to my emails and stuff like that. Just got back in last night and oh my gosh, what a time that we had just trying to get home, you know, flight delays and things like that. They had boarded us on the plane, then they deplaned us and no, 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 just nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. But guys, we are absolutely, like I say, going to need one another because what's coming down the pike is truly just mind-bending. Here we have, we're listening to all of this stuff that is going on. I mean, the, the rumors of war are just insane. And, you know, came back and found out someone said, oh, you left Florida just at the right time because apparently, you know, there's some Russian sub, nuclear subs down there and they're out looking for them right now. And, you know, and then they, you know, they just stocked up, you know, Cuba with a bunch of stuff like that. And here we are with a second Cuban Missile Crisis. And the rhetoric is just being ratcheted up, ratcheted up, ratcheted up for war and that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, what are we seeing in the markets? Well, right now, you know, in this crypto market, we've just seen, you know, another dip. And for me, hey, dips are for buying and not for crying. It's about accumulation and reaching accumulation goals for us. That's how we perceive that. It does not shake my confidence, guys. Not one iota. And why do I believe that? Because, guys, you've heard me say over the last little bit that I absolutely see a major disconnect between the economy and the market and I absolutely believe that they are primed to just send this market in just massive ways I mean let's be honest they are just lying to us flat out lying to us when it comes to where things really are and they're buying debt all these central banks are just buying it up like crazy and the whole idea there of course is to inflate it to the absolute maximum oblivion till the whole thing is just blown to smithereens you know, you are going to see, and we are seeing, all these central banks around the white world just amassing such massive debt. It is absolutely insane. And at the same time, you're watching them. What are they doing? They're just cutting rates, aren't they? And guys, I've shared this. They're cutting those rates so it's easy money for all these big banksters to go up there and do what they do, buy this market up. Because, look, it's not going to be easy money for you and I. I mean, 40%, get this, and this is truly wow, 40% of American households are the working poor. And credit card debt, off the Richter scale, really. And I do believe that we're going to see some really hard times. And this is why I share, get out there and prepare. Get out there and prepare. You know, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more food in the pantry than what you normally would have or buy those things that you're going to be using, you know you're going to be using before, you know, it becomes so out of price that you're just, and get this, the container sizes will shrink, you know, so that you can buy it in smaller quantities at the same price you're buying it today. Things like that. It really does help you down the line to prepare. And uh, with respect to the markets, if you're able to, you know, be involved in these markets like we are, like with, you know, digital assets and things like that, you need to just thank God that you have the ability to have that kind of exposure because I genuinely believe that that is going to be your counter balance when you see the economy just going just nose diving yet the markets on the other hand are just pumping like crazy and that's happened so many times before and a lot of us we don't understand 
the why behind it. We just don't understand the why behind it. And it's because, you know, they really try to keep us in the dark with the understanding of how, you know, how economics genuinely work when it comes to these markets and how there can be this massive disconnect. They want us to be in this state of just not understanding and confusion and on and on and on. Why? Because it's so much easier for them to kind of do what they want to do while they got us all distracted over here, not understanding what's going on over there and all this kind of stuff. And it absolutely is a genuine fact. They absolutely are doing it. And if you just kind of like take time to breathe, look behind the curtain and see all the guy pulling the levers, you know, like in the Wizard of Oz, you know, where the wizard was just operating this big boom machine, you know, making it sound like, ooh, and all this and that, when it's just a bunch of people sitting there pulling levers, pulling strings, pulling whatever, for their benefit and keeping us in the absolute dark. And they've been doing it guys, not for decades, for literally centuries. That is what they've been pulling. And there's no different now. And banding together, you and I, and people like us, absolutely educating people, getting out there, sharing the information, being in the community, supporting one another, sharing their rationales, their whys. Look, I love debate. If you don't agree with me, I have no issue with that. You know, because I'd rather you debate that argument and keep critical thinking alive. That's right there for sure. But, you know, they want us not attacking arguments and debating. They want us attacking one another, don't they? They want us out there dividing us on all kinds of different grounds, you know, like, you know, what we think about this, what we think about that, you know, what culture we're from, and on and on and on. And that is just... A total divide and conquer strategy that they've been employing against us for a long, long time. And we got to say no to that, guys. Got to say no to that. We've got to get out there and really band together and just genuinely look out for one another. And that's what we're going to be trying to do in this community with getting information out and sharing with you what we see coming down the road, what our perspective is. And of course, you're out there and you're able to digest that and say, okay, do I agree? Do I not agree? Why, if not, if why, why, if not, why not? All that kind of stuff. And that is so vitally important to keep alive. Now, a lot of times people will ask, well, how do I prepare for all this stuff that's going down the pike? Well, one way guys is to kind of assess where you're at, right? Where are you at in your situation? You know, how much debt are you carrying? What does the job prospect look for you? You know, where are your kids at? How much would you need if, you know, everything, just let's say worst case scenario happens, how much would you need to have set aside in order to make it at least two, three months? Now, I'm not just talking in, you know, cash. I'm talking about, hey, food, you know, uh, water for sure water you know all these various things supplies in the house things that you know you're gonna need and this and that because i'll tell you what in a real real crisis situation it does not matter look you could have all the money in the wide world if if the product's not out there for you to buy you're not getting it simple as that right it's this whole idea we have been so conditioned with the supply chain the way it is now for us that, hey, you know, yeah, maybe higher price, we, but it's always going to be available. Guys, they had time come, especially if there's global conflict, the way in which they're ratcheting up right now, that you are not going to be able to get with you. It does not matter how much you've got in the bank, you know, whether or not you're going to get it. So think about that. Be prepared in that. Now, what about insulating yourself financially? Guys, I'll tell you what, when I see these dips going on like they're going on now, I am literally, I am looking at that as big time opportunity and especially in this space. Look, in XRP, I've watched just in the last while do some dips and we have been calling those dips saying, hey, look, we're gonna see some major corrections before we see some big blowouts. But do I believe that a massive, massive, you know, explosive move is gonna happen? I absolutely do believe. But I, absol I, I also believe that before that happens, we have seen some big time opportunities in these dips. And that's where, look, right now, as far as I'm concerned, when you're looking at some of these assets, the ability to get them at under 50 cents is truly remarkable. Now think about this. Right now, the sentiment, of course, in the XRP ecosystem is about as 
negative as it has ever been. That is for sure. Yet, just this last week, we saw that over $300 million of XRP was just being gobbled up by whales like crazy. Now, you just think about that. Do you really believe that they're going out there gobbling it all up at these various price points? And we can see that for the entirety of this bear market, that is exactly what the whales have done. Why do you think they're out there doing that, guys? Because they can see what's coming. They've been down this road before. They know how the game is being played. And they're setting themselves up to win, win, win. Well, I'll tell you what. Not all of us can be whales. I don't think I can be a whale. And that type of thing. So what I do, I just stack my pennies next to their dollars. I don't listen to all their advice and the blarky that they're saying out there. You know, I watch and follow their behavior. And then I make a decision that is, you know, based on our risk tolerance and go out there and, and do something with it. That's how. That's how. That is how you position yourself and research it, guys. Get out there genuinely start peeling back the onion now a lot of people think well david how do you research it well i'll tell you one thing youtube is not research it's confluence yes but it is not research and guys what i oftentimes do is i start looking at the nooks and the crannies you know not the mainstream media and stuff like that i go to places where i know i'm able to actually get down into the nitty-gritty of stuff and it does take time and it does take discipline because look, you got to read, read, read. You get the white papers, you download the PDFs, you go to all the, they, I'll tell you what, they're not hiding it, guys. Maybe it's not easy to find. You got to do some digging, but it's there. You go to Bank International Settlements, you go to International Monetary Bureau, heck, you want to see something for real? You go look at the Federal Reserve and see much how much money they have printed this year alone and what they've added to the money supply. Truly unbelievable when at the same time they're talking about, hey, quantitative tightening, you know, and, and getting interest or, or inflation under control and all this. What a bunch of baloney when you consider, you know, what they've actually added to the balance sheet. But my point is this. There are resources out there that if you put on your thinking cap, you can actually go out and start digging information up like that and it will really help you to make a decision for yourself when you see what's going on. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff right there. So vitally, vitally important. And guys, I'll tell you what. And, oh, by the way, I didn't want to miss this. Some really amazing news just come out in the last couple of days here about Apple, I don't know, Apple has utilized, you know, the uh, interledger protocol, you know, for their Apple payments and things like that and how that's all tied to this whole, you know, XRP ledger system and it is truly phenomenal. You hear them very much about that? Not as much as what you would think you would hear, are you? Now, something else you're not hearing too much about, of course, is the whole end of the contract that the United States had with Saudi Arabia that propped up the petrodollar. Not hearing too much about that either. And you're watching all of the, you know, the elements that are required for a major conflict in the wide world. Because I'll tell you what, they have gone to war over the, over, you know, maintaining that, you know, war over reserve currency status for the U.S. But I think it's done. I think they know it's done. I don't think they have the resolve. They realize, hey, big, big, you know, uh, blocks of nations around the world forming their own unions with bricks and everything like that and their replacements for it. And I do believe there is going to, the U.S. reserve currency, it's done, it's done, it's done. And I just think it's just going to be a slow, you know, we're going to watch it just this slow, ebbing away, ebbing away. But when they do come out with another one, I think it's going to be agnostic, guys. I do not believe that it's going to be tied to any one national power. I believe it's going to be a kind of a global agreement between the G20, G7, all that. Could be involved the International Monetary Fund. Maybe it's going to be like an electronic, um, you know, special drawing right or something like that. And it could very well be backed by solid commodities. Why? Because when this current fiat system totally implodes, right, it's all based on folks' confidence, you know, in the economies that are issuing the currency. Well, that confidence is getting blown absolutely away. 
And so what are they going to need to do? I mean, they're going to have to build up the populace's confidence again. That's where I think they're going to be backing it by gold and stuff like that. Because central banks, I'll tell you, they've been gobbling up gold like crazy over the last 10 years. I mean, insane amounts. Needless to say, I do believe that they will back it, certainly. You know, buy some sort of a basket of commodities, gold and, and all that kind of stuff. But I do believe it's going to be issued on distributed ledger technology. You had better believe it. And it's going to be seamlessly able to interact with all of these others. And you got 90 plus percent countries around the world developing central bank digital currencies. And guys, what are they balancing it again? What standards are they using? Well, they're using the, the ISO 222 messaging standards in the bank, aren't they? That is an international what do they call it? International Organization for Standardization is what it actually means. And so it is a major, major deal. And by 2025, that all has to be in place, doesn't it? Guys, connect the dots, connect the dots. We are literally watching it happen in real time. It is truly, truly amazing. And I'll tell you what, yes, hard times are coming, but you can insulate yourself for them and we can be here for one another to give out information and to share with one another, hey, where you might be able to, you know, kind of tighten things up so you're not a victim, that's for sure. Well, guys, I'll tell you what, we have an amazing video planned for us later on today. And until then, have a fabulous one and take care.